Right, episode 10. Uh, and you join me on a very warm morning here at the Colm Valley Railway. And today is a really exciting episode because we've actually had, as you can see here, the delivery of the running boards. All eight of them have arrived. Obviously, we've only prepared this side uh, of the bracket so far. But my aim for today will be to get a couple of these installed. And then I also want to talk over some things that I'm doing differently uh, from before uh, and some, some other bits and bobs. But I just wanted to say firstly, before we get into the video, a huge, huge thank you to everybody who's been commenting, liking, uh, watching. I really, really cannot thank you enough for the support this series has had so far and the feedback. Again, both positive or constructive, uh, I really do appreciate all the feedback. So if you see anything in this video that you think I uh, should do differently or whatever, please just let me know in the comment section below and I'll try my best to uh, implement it in future episodes. So yeah, uh, like I say, I appreciate the support. I think we should uh, install some running boards. So let's roll the intro and I'll see you all in a second. So as you would have seen in episode eight, uh, I said one of the first things I need to do uh, when getting these running boards were, was to check the level uh, of how upright these brackets were. Now I've been along checking a few of them and uh, this one here and the one at the very far end are slightly out. So what I think I'm gonna, the rest are fine. So what I think I'm gonna do is probably, when it comes to installing them, uh, is fix the brackets on that are fine and then hopefully try and so drill the holes as they should be on all the brackets. And then this one, I'm going to try and uh, want to need some assistance probably, but to pull out and then bolt down. And then hopefully uh, this wood obviously is quite thick. Um, hopefully that will hold it in position. Uh, yeah, and keep these all nice and straight. Now you might be wondering where the kickboards are at the back here. Now I don't plan on installing kickboards, and I know it's a bit controversial as the originals did have uh, the kickboards along the back here. But an issue raised by uh, another chap here who owns a brake van uh, is that when you've got them on here, the water, any water that lands on here, pretty much runs straight into the back channel here. So it's only going to be a matter of time before the running before the kickboards start rotting anyway. Like they're, they're going to be the first to go because uh, you're just going to have water trapped in here with with nowhere for the the water to leave. So I think I'm not going to bother doing that. Um, you may agree or disagree, please let me know what you think in the comments, but uh, I think from a uh, preserving it type of uh, uh, side of things uh, and keeping it like this as long as possible, in good, as good condition as long as possible, uh, I think that's going to definitely be the way forward. Now, I'm not sure how well you see it from that angle here, but the two boards, uh, there's going to be a join here and a metal plate underneath. Now, these are scaffold, these are super thick scaffolding boards, so I think normally scaffolding boards come uh, in thicknesses of around uh, 35 mil. These are 38, so they're much thicker than I think the average, I mean, comparison, it's a few millimeters, but these are definitely much sturdier than the standard ones you get. Um, and they come with these metal brackets on the end. Now there's a metal bracket on each of these, and originally I was thinking I'll take them off and I'll join these together uh, and have these butted up against each other. But I think now, uh, just sort of discussing the idea there with the, the running water going on the kickboards, uh, I'm going to leave the brackets on here so then if any water does run here uh, there is a gap for the water to run through and it will stop the ends uh, from getting damp and not being able to uh, lose the water anywhere. So that's the plan for that. The bottom boards obviously I've got to cut out where the axle boxes are but I thought the easiest thing to do again you might agree or disagree do let me know uh, is to install the top ones cut them down to exactly the right length and shape and then I can copy that cut uh, for the other boards, so then when I put them on here, all I have to do is cut round um, the axle boxes, so I'm not measuring several times. I can put these in, cut the curve the ends to how I want them, and then replicate them uh, on the bottom set. So that's enough of me rambling. Let's uh, have a look at installing some of these. So something you may remember in a previous video a little while ago, I showed you I got these M10 washers these square washers and basically I mentioned uh, that I was going to use them as spacers under, under, uh, underneath some of these pieces of wood just to get it 
uh, level. So as you can see, we're level there, and that's got two underneath it on the front edge at the moment. And that's basically because, uh, obviously, where I've been sanding, uh, sort of taking this back to the metal, some of the uh, metal work has sort of uh, been eaten away uh, and disintegrated uh, just because of the condition it was in. So I'm going to use some of these, obviously, as you can see, two under there, uh, and we get it nice and level. So not all of them are going to need them, uh, but they're there. Uh, should that be the case. So what I'm going to do now is just mark out where I need to cut these boards at each end and I'm going to show you a, a little new power tool I've picked up as well. So yeah, let's move on to that. Right, so for those of you interested in power tools, here is my re recent acquisition. It is the Bosch Advanced Cut 18, a fancy name for basically a mini chainsaw. Let's put that there. Now there is another reason why I've brought this, um, but I've just realised it's going to be the perfect uh, height for cutting through this as well, uh, providing I can keep a, a nice straight line. Obviously I've left, I've done it to 12 and a half here because I want to leave it a little bit, uh, just so when Charles brings his sort of uh, router along, uh, we can make a nice curve uh, into the final half an inch there. Um, so this doesn't need to be a dead straight cut, but I'll show you why I've got this in a second, but uh, I just realised, as I say, it's perfect for cutting through this. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to move this onto a bit more of a, uh, a stable place and then cut through it. So I'll see you all shortly. So if you've been to the Colne Valley Railway before, you'll know that there's the Black Five Group uh, on one side of the site and next to them is the BESPS group. Now I can't remember exactly what that stands for so I'll write it here um, what the uh, non-abbreviated term for that is. Um, but one of their projects is extending a piece of track uh, on the Colne Valley site um, all the way into their end. Now at the moment you'll see we've got the tube wagon here uh, and the buffer stop which has been taken over by, over by brambles and other bits and bobs just lying about. But one of the reasons I got this uh, was because on our side of the land there is um, this, sort of, this sort of small tree bush type thing you might be able to see to the left of the picture there and that's going to need cutting down in order for them to um, sort of extend off this line. So obviously this is on our side of the land which means it's our responsibility uh, and I've taken it upon myself uh, to have a go at trying to remove it. So I'm probably, only, I'm probably not going to get particularly far with this because I didn't realise how big it was and perhaps this mini chainsaw might not do the job, uh, but we can try. But if you guys would like to see more of what else goes on at the Colm Valley Railway uh, and not just a brake van, please do let me know in the comment section below. If you would like to see progress on this uh, on pro or progress on other things like uh, what the diesel guys get up to, uh, you've got the signal and transmission guys here as well. There's all sorts of different projects going on at the Colm Valley Railway. Um, and of course, if you'd like to get involved, just pop down and uh, speak to a member of staff here as well. But yeah, let's uh, have a go at chopping some of this tree down. Well, this thing managed to bring down almost this whole tree aside the slightly larger stump at the bottom, which is going to need a handsaw or a chainsaw or something. Um, but no, I didn't let it defeat me. That time lapse you probably only would have seen about, uh, probably I did most of this side, I think, on the time lapse, but then the time lapse would have been about 20 minutes long if uh, we did the whole lot. Um, so we're down, to, as I say, down to the stump. So now uh, I can't really do much until we've got a JCB uh, in this area where I can actually grab and drag a lot of this stuff out because it take five minutes with a JCB, but several, several hours by hand. So it's not really worth wasting any more energy on that. 
Um, I also cut a small bush down at the start, which you'd have seen in the time lapse. Um, so all that's left now is about maybe eight meters length of brambles, um, and then can assess what the uh, ground level is like compared to uh, the back of the tube van, tube wagon where the buffer is. So I'm going to take a lunch break now, and when we come back, we'll carry on with the uh, brake van. Right, so from that time lapse, you might have seen me starting to cut uh, along this back here uh, to try and reduce the uh, depth of this wood. Now, this jigsaw, I mean, you won't be able to see it on camera here, but as I was cutting, I was, I was noticing it wasn't quite following the exact path I wanted it to do. Uh, and then having turned it over, the base isn't quite straight either, which is a bit annoying because th there's like locking mechanism under here and that's in the middle, but for some reason the base isn't. So I've been getting a rather sort of wonky line. So what I've decided to do is, bolt is to screw that piece back on um, and then when Charles is next down with his disc cutter, I'm going to get him to run along the front edge here and it'll probably, it'd be, probably take half the time um, and will be a lot neater as well. So instead, what I'm going to do is, as you know, I've cut this already, that, that's no problem. Uh, I'm going to start on the one, two, there's four, so there's four, four brackets along here. One is a little bit wonky, so the other three uh, I'm going to drill the holes through and get the coach bolts in uh, and then see how that comes out. So yeah, gonna gonna give up with this one because it's been doing my head in. And let's go get some uh, coach bolts and a drill. I've got to make sure this is all uh, centre as well uh, and then we can, uh, we can go from there. So hopefully this will be a little bit more successful than that. Um, and yeah, let's roll another time lapse. Right, so from them time lapses, you'd have seen me drill the holes out. Um, the drill bit is exactly the same width as the bolt. So the bolt has a nice snug fit, which is why you'd have seen me uh, hitting it with a hammer. The bottom of the bolt as well also has a little bit that sort of digs into the wood. So if you hit that um, with a hammer, uh, it sinks into the wood nicely. So I've done the bolts all the way up till I've uh, got to do the last section uh, and pad them, out, pad them out underneath with these square washers. You'd have then seen me with the angle grinder uh, cutting away the bolts from an old piece of wood uh, to get myself a nice uh, joining piece, save going to buy a load more of these. I'll try and reuse what I can. So this piece here, if you imagine this is underneath, that's going to sit along the back there like that. So then it means if we come along here and cut this, we're not going to interfere with this at all. Um, so what I need to do is uh, put it underneath, mark out with a pencil where uh, the first bolt's going to go and then once I've got that in, I can then just drill uh, the other two and then we'll have a nice uh, bracket fitted underneath. So I'm gonna get on with that now and I'll uh, join you back in a minute. Right, that's board number two done on this side, all bolted in. Now, I'm not sure if you were to see from there, but I actually used some of those 
uh, square washers in here just to make uh, this level rather than it sink like that. I did try hammering this bracket out uh, and bending it, but I couldn't, I couldn't, I haven't really got the strength to do it. So maybe uh, next time Charles or someone's down here, they might be able to give me a hand. I can take those out and uh, re-tighten them up. Uh, but you might be able to see in the background, there's a few dark clouds starting to appear. So rather than carry on with the next piece of wood, I'm going to sweep this all down uh, and get a couple of coats of um, some wood preserver over the top of it. Even though these have been treated already because obviously outside scaffolding boards, um, I'm just going to go over the top with a couple of coats of this. So I'm going to do that uh, and then depending on the weather, we might leave it there, uh, we might not. So I'll join you in a second. So as you would have seen from that time lapse, we've got one coat down of the wood preserver. Now I want to let this dry a little bit and then get a second one on. As I mentioned, uh, we've got a couple of dark clouds slowly appearing, so I don't want to start on any more pieces of wood until I've got enough time to do everything uh, that I want to do properly. Now, a question for you guys, uh, and it's more about accuracy, accuracy versus durability. So basically, um, do I leave this as it is? Um, obviously it's going to be painted and everything, but I'm talking about the edge here. And you might be able to see here it started to already flake away because when you climb up it naturally you get your you catch your feet on this edge bit here now after a while that's going to start to break away uh, that's just the way it is obviously the more wear you put on it the more it's going to to wear away um so do i add uh, obviously it's not as accurate as the actual things but it's going to certainly add uh give this give this piece of wood a much longer lifespan um do i add these metal right angle pieces uh on here only, of course, only where the steps are on these two and those two and then obviously on the other side, but just in the section uh, that people climb on, because obviously that means that when people put their feet on this corner piece, there's never going to be a point where it starts to flake away at the pieces of wood. So let me know in the comments section what you think. Uh, do we go for accuracy or do we go for durability? Let's move on. Right guys, so I think that's actually where we're going to end this episode. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Like I said, uh, if you like seeing the things like, you know, we cut down some of the tree there, if you want to see more progress on that uh, and any other particular projects that I may get involved in down here, please let me know in the comment section or unless you'd rather just see uh, the restoration of, of this only. Um, there's loads going on down here, as I say, so there's, there's content galore, really. Um, but yeah, let me know about the aluminium, uh, the steel right angle pieces here as well, uh, if you think that's a good idea or not. Uh, I would carry on, but... As I mentioned, it, it looks like it's gonna rain soon, so I'd rather get all my tools and kit and everything away uh, rather than uh, risk it all getting wet. The next episode, uh, well, we have got the HST launch uh, this weekend, uh, this Saturday. I'm not sure if this video will be out by then because I've still got um, a couple of other videos that need editing, editing first. And then next episode, hopefully, we'll be removing one of the ducats. So that's something to look forward to. That should be interesting, trying to get one of them off. Uh, just because of the sheer amount of bolts that is holding it on. But yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the progress in today's episode. Uh, like I said, please do hit the thumbs up uh, and any feedback is always welcome in the comment section. I'll reply to all the comments. So uh, um, at some point I'll get round to, if I haven't replied, I'll get round to it as soon as possible. But yeah, I will see you all in the next one. Uh, yeah, cheers.